Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I was just about to start uh, rereading Graveyard Shift Volume 1 for the uh, crossover event that me, John Malin, and Ethan Van Skyver are doing. It's going to be the Jawbreakers team, the Graveyard Shift ghouls. <laughs> ghouls, as Charlie Kelly would say, ghouls, you know, little green ghouls. Um, and then Cyberfrog, uh, all in one story uh, together. So I got, I got, I got thumbs up on like a three sentence um, description of the plot by uh, John and EVS. So then I basically like, hey, I need to reread it. And um, uh, I got most of the story, so I'm probably going to get out all the note cards tomorrow, put those down and then do like a one sentence per page type of thing and then run it by them and then do the, the final story. But I saw this. Um, and I felt I needed to, uh, uh, weigh in. Uh, so, so Brett Booth, who is, you know, um, been around since the 1990s. He was at Wildstorm. He's at DC now. Sketch cover commissions are $5,500. Damn. Get it, son. <laughs> get it. Get it. Make that money. Wow. That's, um, I think that's a joke. I think that might be a way of getting people to just uh, go away. Yeah, that's a, that sounds high. Um, or it sounds like you are high when you write that. Um, uh, is I know uh, Billy was on a stream last night with EVS, and he was talking about how he really memed himself with a, uh, a cover uh, perk level. He gave, I believe, the original art for two covers and sold it for $1,500. And then he said, uh, Jimmy Pomiotti called him and was like, what are you doing? Uh, because Amanda Connor, uh, Jimmy's wife and the artist of one of the uh, she covers, sold hers for like something like five or six grand. Uh, the deal is, what I'm saying is, people don't pay you that much to, to do a sketch, but people will pay that much for high-end um, uh, uh, original art. I'm not explaining that, am I? An employer will not pay a freelancer fifty five hundred to do a sketch, but a col or a cover. But a collector will pay the the freelancer because uh, typically the uh, the original art is going to be the own. It's the it's going to be like the physical piece of paper is going to be owned by the artist, and then they get to sell it on the secondary market. That's a that's a really big uh, second source of uh, income. That uh, it always uh, kind of confuses me when when uh, artists are like, "Oh, I do everything digital now." It's like you didn't. I tell you, multiple revenue streams. That's that's where it at. Where it's at. Um, so he says, uh, Brett Booth says, "So I'm seeing people doing Kickstarters on both platform." He's using Kickstarter in the the way that people say Xerox, even if it's a Canon copier, they say Coke when they're asking for a Pepsi. He's just saying crowdfunding. Uh, he says, so I'm seeing people doing crowdfunding on both platforms. Is this okay? Anyone have a problem with it? Yeah, I got a problem with it. Yeah. I mean, I actually kind of do. <laughs> That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Not a problem, but I've got some advice, which is don't do it. So uh, Billy Tucci just had uh, She Return of the Warrior, singular, um, and he did it on uh, Kickstarter first. And then he did it on Indiegogo. And I, I I only really became aware of it when it became on a Indiegogo. And uh, he did it. So you see he made 60000 on one, um, uh, 70000 uh, on another. So that's great, $130,000. Um, now, the advantage that people do is that Kickstarter is kind of the one that more people are aware of, but Indiegogo is the up-and-coming one. Um I understand the rationale between be, behind like you know put, not putting all your eggs in one basket, but the peculiarities of crowdfunding, I would highly, highly recommend you choose one. Either go with Kickstarter or go with Indiegogo for your main uh, focus. Um, and I'll tell you why right now. Okay, so. Indiegogo and Kickstarter, they're both crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, and you'll notice this especially on Indiegogo, it says it says something like, this is not a purchase, you are uh, supporting something being created. So, so the traditional idea of crowdfunding is a project has started or it is not completed and you are giving people money to finish it 
In exchange, you're going to get a, I think they call them perks on Indiegogo and rewards on a, a Kickstarter. Now, Kickstarter, I know back in the day, they said this is not a store. Like you couldn't have a completed project. Now, I mean, if you technically you want to say all the pages are drawn, but we haven't done the print file, I guess technically. No, actually, that's not a completed uh, comic book. But um, now it's kind of changed. Now a lot of people are finishing their book before they start it because then there's less turnaround time. There's less risk. Um, with both Kickstarter and Indiegogo, as far as I know, the last time I checked, there's no real guarantee if you never get your stuff. You can't ask for a refund, um, uh, but there's a lot of kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Like loopholes that basically say, you know, you're, you're funding the progress on something. You're not actually buying uh, a, a book. Um, uh, you know, obviously there have been lawsuits, but the lawsuits are about like the huge ones for like one or two million. They never deliver anything. Um, because then you can get into some kind of, you know, fraud accusations. But honestly, some people just, they, I, I would say most people do not properly estimate how much work it is to do a crowdfund, a successful one, and especially an unsuccessful one. There's this kind of a, a gray area down around the, I'll call it the 5,000 and below, where I think even if you are successful, you should have an honest talk with yourself afterwards about maybe just refunding the money because I had one that was successful and I made $3,500 and then I spent basically all of my free time for a year uh, finishing the project and it absolutely was not worth it. I probably ended up making about freaking $3 an hour when you put in uh, all, the, all the time I put into it and you know subtract the, uh, the expenses, what I actually was actually able to pay myself. Um, so, uh, the, the differences are, you know, Kickstarter is, uh, is, is, has, is better known. People say Kickstarter when they mean any kind of crowdfunding, um, Kickstarter pays you, uh, or it subtracts some money from people at the end when the campaign closes, that's when your credit card's going to get uh, charged. advantages Kickstarter has is that it also accepts PayPal. Indiegogo does not have PayPal. Again, all this stuff can change in you know, one day, but this is as far as I know. And the other uh, advantage um, is Kickstarter. You can put in APO or FPO. These are deployed military addresses. For some insane reason, Indiegogo does not have that. I've even put in a trouble ticket to him. I was like, dude, like every web forum since the 1990s has allowed you to put in you know, military deployed addresses. For some reason, Indiegogo doesn't accept it. I don't know why. Indiegogo, okay, so um, uh, Indiegogo is a little different uh, because Indiegogo charges you as soon as you make your pledge, although you can uh, get a refund, especially to change things up. Um, so the advantage to someone running a campaign is if you run a Kickstarter, there are a whole bunch of people who are either going to cancel their orders at the last day. They go, oh man, I really need that 25, 30, 50 bucks. Cancel. The other thing is a lot of people are going to be overdrawn. They're just going to forget to have that extra money in their account. I lived for 20 years like with razor thin you know, margins in my uh, checking account. So I remember being poor and having to cancel Kickstarter. I had to do that more than once. Um, so you'll get a lot of uh, uh, failed uh, charges. And this can be quite significant. This can chop like 10%, 5 to 10% off of what you thought you were going to get. Whereas Indiegogo, it's a lot more stable. People will do refunds, but you kind of see them happening during the campaign and you just kind of uh, adjust for them. Um, uh, okay, so which one do I recommend? Indiegogo, definitely. That's not just because of, you know, my personal problems I've had with uh, Kickstarter, but uh, because of things like this. Uh, Kickstarter has a political commissar. Straight up and down a political commissar. She is billed as a comics outreach lead, but I had to open these up on the side because she mixes her business stuff with, like, Wishing her Mima a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mima. So I don't, I, I, I try to be respectful of people's uh, family. So uh, I just opened this up. I scrolled down, um, you know, in the tweets, not the retweets, but just the tweets, uh, going back uh, uh, more than a month. And there were only 
two comics she actually recommended as the comics outreach lead. One is Be Gay, Do Comics, and the other one is Power and Magic, The Queer Witch Comics Anthology. You're probably probably noticing a trend. Um, uh, this is, you know, kind of a, I would say, almost a, a cartoonishly uh, cliched SJW uh, installed to uh, uh, make sure people on the right side of history uh, are on the uh, Kickstarter no union platform. <laughs> It's got to be so awkward to be an SJW who works for a woke union buster. Uh, the other thing that's a huge problem is that Kickstarter takes a, a larger chunk uh, of your uh, money. Um, if I remember correctly, between the uh, Indiegogo, the percentage they take, and then the, um, the credit card handling fee, I believe it's like about 7% for Indiegogo. It's 10% uh, for Kickstarter. So um, I think I covered yeah, most of them. Indiegogo, I feel like, just has a better website. Kickstarter feels like a website from 2011. Uh, Indiegogo feels like a website for right now. It, you especially notice this when you look at it uh, on a phone. Um, so clicking these off. I don't like having so many tabs. Um, so, yeah, so he says, uh, so I'm seeing... People doing Kickstarters on both platforms. Is this okay? Yeah, it's it's allowed. Um, anyone have a problem with it? I got. Oh yeah, I just I did the whole I got a problem with it bit. So here's the deal. Most people said yes, and I will still disagree because of this. You got she Return of the Warrior, and I'm really happy about this because um, uh, you know Billy Tucci. He's been around forever. He's a great guy. Works for everyone. Great with customers, um, and um, you know. You see people and they're uh, they're really well known and they're great. And it's just, you know, you're flicking the the lighter and it's just not igniting, you know, and it takes a while to kind of get the whole crowdfunding thing. And there's, you know, you, these people who really, really I feel like deserve some success. And it just the first couple ones just don't work out. And then for some reason it, it happens. Now, I I consider this to be the huge success it was because it's she. It's the character he's known for. I, I talked about with the Brian Polito. You know, if Lady Death does good, do two Lady Death and then do something else. Don't do Lady Death and then two other projects and then Lady Death. I, you know what I want after she? I want another she. You know, just keep keep going in this direction. But one thing I have a problem with is you see here, 1,000 backers, 70,000. Uh, 1,200 backers, 59,000. But you don't see six figures because, I mean, you can add it up and say, you know, a total crowdfunding. But one of the things that's so exciting about crowdfunding is it's exciting get, getting to, you know, emotionally significant numbers. Um, a lot of times I'll kind of lose track of a, uh, I'll, I'll lose track of a campaign, say um, uh, Star Blades by Kyle Ritter. And it's like doing good. It's doing good. It's like at 70,000. You're like, that's good, but I felt like it could have done a lot better. It's kind of ending up. And then I'll check back a month later, and it's like at 135,000. You're like, what happened? Well, so you slowly, slowly, slowly got up to 100,000. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're off to races because everyone's like, oh, wow. Everyone likes, you know, it's like that whole cliche, you know, halfway through the Super Bowl, people are putting on the hat of the team that's winning. You're on that winning team, it's more exciting. Now, Billy is absolutely on a winning team, but I'm thinking this 130,000 could have been 140, 150,000 plus if it would have been on one platform. So the things I mentioned about, you know, some people don't have, the thing well, I said about the credit cards, uh, if, if you really want an Indiegogo and you don't have a credit card, you can go to freaking Best Buy and get one of those little, like, little Visa, you know, prepaid cards. You can buy it with that. Um, Honestly, the amount of people who have no credit or debit cards, it's very few. And you can even do like just a personal, like just announce, hey, if you absolutely don't have that, um, just email me and, and just PayPal me directly. And then um, uh, I'll send I'll send it to you in the mail. Because one of the things about uh, publishing and printing is you should always print more because books are going to get lost. Books are going to get damaged. The other thing is that all of the expense of printing is setting up the printing press to print. 
when they give you that quote, you know, they'll give you, you know, uh, for, you know, 1,000, 3,000, 6,000, whatever. And then they'll be, they always give you like another thousand books for like nothing, like nothing. Like, the, like you, it's, it's so like you basically, you're like, I'm an idiot if I don't do this. Like, because an extra a thousand books to, for them, that's like five more minutes of the press running. They don't care. It's no big deal to them. But you can turn those extra thousand books and you can especially, and this is great for Indiegogo, Indiegogo has the in-demand store. So I know, I'm guessing Billy did something. He goes, I'm going to start on Kickstarter because that's more famous. And then I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to Indiegogo. And then when the Indiegogo ends, it's going to be the in-demand store. I'm saying just do Indiegogo. Just do Indiegogo. And then, because, you know, I have this uh, 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 Jawbreaker's God King, which people are already getting very excited about that. And um, you can see right here, the campaign finished at 196,000. Um, and uh, over the last couple of months with not a lot of, you know, publicity or, or really promotion, we got uh, another 50,000 almost. Um, and this is just going to keep going from there. There was a giant bump when Iron Sights 2 came out. And I wasn't really advertising. Jo it's just like you, you bring your new book out and then it reminds you, it reminds people, oh, I forgot to get God King. And then they go get God King. And then when God King comes out, then there's a whole nother bunch of people going, oh, it's it's real. He didn't just take the money and, and you know, go off to the Bahamas. He's actually delivering and people are, are showing the pictures and, hey, it looks good. So you're going to get a whole lot more sales. Um, and I just say, just go with one. I mean, honestly, I don't really see any advantages to Kickstarter. They're going to take more of your money, as I showed with their political commissar slash comics outreach lead. She's going to promote SJW stuff. It's going to be it's going to be a, a lesbian uh, bicycle riding comic book anthology. That's what she's going to promote. And I've talked to people who, uh, who have done pretty darn good. We're talking 50,000 plus. And they're like, I was the number one selling for like this last week. Th th they gave me no promotion. And then this, this book that looks like garbage just because it comes from, you know, marginalized people, they gave all of this promotion to. Um, uh, so as you see here, right here, uh, Jawbreakers, uh, God King got the Indiegogo team favorites. Campaigns were loving this week. Um, I don't remember which week that was. Iron Sights, mm -hmm. guess they just weren't loving it. Um, <laughs> but they did love this one. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, this would not have happened on Kickstarter. I never would have gotten any kind of, you know, extra push like I did with the Indiegogo team favorites. It's, they're going to put it on the you know front page and they're going to emphasize it some more, which is going to help you uh, get more get more uh, uh, backers. And also it just becomes easier Then people. You know, you go over here to your your corner and then you got the uh, uh, my contribution. So you're going to have all of your orders. So, you know, obviously I have some issues with Kickstarter and vice versa, but I would think that objectively it is better. Um, and just, just the splitting things, like I understand the thinking behind it, but I'm just like, just build on one platform. And to me, the one with the real future, more money in your pocket, you don't have a political gatekeeper and they're actually going to give you recommendations if you're not in some approved, you know, privileged class. Uh, Indiegogo is the way to go, go. Um, so, uh. Yeah, so a lot of people say, oh, it's good because, you know, you can split it. I, I don't know. Splitter. Remember that from uh, Life of Brian? Um, oh, here's a, here's a sweet cast. He says, ultimately, it comes down to your crowd. You might have backers that prefer one or the other. But if this is your first stab at it, I would pick one and direct your crowd there. Personally, I like IgG best. And there's a lot of people here that, you know, I, I, uh, I, I know them and... They're good people, but I just I don't think the splitting is is a good idea. I think it's it's always going to lead to um, you know it's not as exciting to say I made sixty thousand here and seventy thousand. It's much more exciting to say I made one hundred thirty thousand, and I think that one hundred thirty thousand I think it would have been one hundred forty or one hundred fifty because there's this huge like rocket booster that hits even when you start getting closer to some you know significant number like fifty thousand, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. People get excited and they start. Uh, put in more or or they'll go back and they'll add something to their, you know, uh, uh, original order. Um, but, oh, so, so what does this one say? I don't like Kickstarter, but I definitely would never criticize someone for launching on both like 
Billy Tucci did. I only back on Indiegogo, but if a creator can get support from both, then definitely take advantage. I've heard there is possible terms of service issues that could arise, though. Uh, I haven't heard about anything like that. I mean, th I did read one time I did read them and like th there's like so many ways that they can, you know, use like the uh, we don't like you go away and they could th there. Then they had just have like these catch alls. Um, so, uh, yeah, just do it on one. And, and my high recommendation is to just do it on uh, Indiegogo. So let's see if I got any. I mean, I guess I could cheat and look at my phone if I got any updates, but let's just see. Two, four, one, seven, one, two. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> Why? Uh, things are doing good. It's so embarrassing. If it's like the first and the last day, there'll be like a huge jump up on both of them. Oh, they're both the same. Oh, let's see if uh, Billy's went up uh, since I started this one. Nine four two. Oh, what a loser! I'm joking. It's 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 twelve ten at night. There's not a lot of people <laughs> on Indiegogo this late. But uh, anyway, yeah. So just uh, uh, just to reiterate, Indiegogo has no political commissar. Indiegogo doesn't have a lot of failed transactions at the end or people canceling at the last minute. Uh, Indiegogo is going to take about seven percent versus about ten percent. From Kickstarter and honestly Indiegogo is just a future it's 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 been on a come up people who would never consider Indiegogo a year or two ago uh, like Sean Gordon Murphy here he appears to be leaning towards doing Indiegogo for his next uh, huge crowdfunding campaign and he has said it's gonna be a story not an art book so I think that's gonna be uh, massive and I'm very excited about that one so anyway thanks for watching Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogos. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Jawbreakers is already getting out to people, which means if you order this, you should get it by Christmas time. So you can order it as, as a Christmas present. Iron Sights 2 will probably get to you by, pre I don't know, President's Day. <laughs> what, what are the January holidays? You're going to get it in January, but it's it's all done. I'm just doing uh, uh, some... Uh, what do you call it? proofreading on the interior pages you can see the covers done the pinups done all the interior arts done and everything's lettered i'm just doing little tweaks here and there um literally all i have to do is do the credits page do the back cover which the art is already created for the back cover i just have to um uh what do you call it uh write the copy and order the uh the barcode <laughs> that's it i got to do like three things Besides just, you know, generic proofreading. And I'm going to do uh, probably about a week or so. I'm going to do a, a round of asking people to um, uh, proofread it. And that'll be paid just like on my previous projects. So uh, anyway, um, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll have this. Oh, jeez. Web of Black Widow. Oh, God. This art is awful. You got to see it. It's embarrassing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.